Hello and welcome to Raspberry Crafts, my YouTube channel where I share all my crafty adventures. Today is June 22nd, 2023, and this is episode 64. Today for you, I have, oh, that's not the right segment. Anyway. <laughs> Today for you, I have finished objects, works in progress, events, and some chatter. My name is Roz and I live in Lake Country, British Columbia, Canada with my husband and my two kids who are 13 and 11. Um, now I'm all thrown off. <laughs> Welcome to the episode. <laughs> if I did titles, maybe that'd be the title. Um, let's see. I would like to thank all you returning subscribers for coming back and welcome to all you new subscribers. Let's jump right in to what we're talking about today. Finished objects. Today for you, I have four finished objects, but it is one project. First, this is a frog. He's cute little feet. There's no tail or anything. He's just... Second, which one did I finish second? Got a cute little beaver. He's got a full floppy tail. Um, I ran out of pink, so his ears are gray, but I think it works. He's got like vampire teeth. Not my best work, but it'll do. Third is a sea otter. He's got a little urchin that he's eating. Nom, nom, nom. Um, and the tail got super long because I just kept on going, but there we go. It's cute. And the last one is a bunny. I think I did pretty good with like the nose and mouth thing. I was trying to make him smile, but he's got a huge fluffy little pom-pom tail. One kind of loop sticking out funny, but yeah. I keep, I keep futzing, like doing that is gonna fix anything, but let's see if I can, hold on, hold on. Ta-da! <laughs> So uh, these <laughs> fun creatures are all mascots for my upcoming trip. I'm just going to put them down over there because they keep falling on my lap Ugh, everywhere. Okay, <laughs> these are mascots for the trip that we're taking this summer. Uh, we each picked an animal and I created those cute little fun things out of some leftovers. The fluorescent colors are ginger snap that um, in the gummy bears colorway, and the gray is some Knit Picks Mighty Stitch that I had left over from some other things. Um, yeah, so there's not much of either of those left over, so it feels good to use up leftovers for sure and to make some cute animals out of them. The pattern that I used is Bunnables, Bunnables, Bunnables by Barbara Prime. You tr try saying that three times fast. <laughs> now I can't speak at all. <laughs> Anyway, that was a bit of a labor of love. I kind of forced myself to work on them every evening this week uh, when I had time to sit down on the couch and watch TV, but I got them done and all the kids and Mike and I are very happy with them. Um, so Cooper's is the frog, uh, Taylor's is the sea otter, Mike wanted the beaver, and um, I went with the classic bunny because it was easy. <laughs> Mine was last. Um, yes, I think that is it. Oh goodness. It's getting late in the day, guys. I'm, I'm a bit silly. That is it for finished objects and we will move on to works in progress. My first work in progress is something you have seen before. It's a blob of blue. <laughs> This is going to be my Ripple Camisole. Ripple Camisole is a pattern by Jessie Made Designs, and um, I have to do like 15 or so inches of three by three ribbing, but uh, I think I'm at about five. When I stretch it out, of course, so with this kind of knitting, when you stretch it out, you actually lose some height. So I stretched it out and measured, and I was about five inches. So. Definitely want more than that. 
Um, the yarn that I'm using is some um, Knit Picks Stroll in the blue yonder tonal colorway. So working away on that. That's not, not been getting a lot of love because I have cast on all of the items that I am taking with me on our six week trip. If you saw last week's video, you saw all of my future plans and all nine projects that I'm gonna take, including the ripple camisole, are now cast on uh, with mostly the correct needle size. I have all the yarn wound up and ready to go. All the notions that I need is all together and I have this giant pile of three bags that is coming with me. <laughs> Mike is going to roll his eyes. He's fine with me bringing knitting. He just is going to roll his eyes at how much I'm bringing because there is no way I'm going to finish all of these projects on the trip, but I want to have options. And it kind of helps me plan out the rest of my year's stuff. Um, I mean, if I could finish all of these nine projects by the end of the summer, that would be amazing. So next up, we're going to talk about my stonewall. I have been working on this one a fair bit. So this is the stonewall pullover. Sorry, my I've, I've arranged kind of weird today. So my computer is kind of behind my tripod. So I keep like leaning to see it, but I can see it if I don't lean. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Stonewall by Alicia Plummer is the pattern that I'm using for this one. It is a worsted weight bottom up sweater. Um, I probably should have started with the sleeves, but I didn't. So I've started with the body. <laughs> that is a ton of ribbing. Nine centimeters to be exact. Um, I learned a new cast on. I am very proud of it. Look at that. Just like this is called the long tail tubular cast on. It is definitely a bit of work to do it, but I am very happy with the result. And then when you spread out this ribbing, it just, it just goes with it. So when it's stretched around my uh, ample hips, it will not look funny or pull weird. So, and I've just started, I've just switched to the larger needles for the body. And um, there are kind of pearl bumps along the way. So it's not just plain stockinette, but it's pretty close. So I don't want to give too much of the secret sauce away, but I think you can probably see that in the pattern pictures. So the yarn that I'm using for this one is Fireweed Fiber Co. And this is her cedar worsted. It is a beautiful woolly wool. And I am so, oh, this is gonna, I'm gonna live in this in the fall and the winter. So uh, the color for this one is Purple Kush. And uh, I have started my second skein, um, but I did swatch with the most or at least a half of the first one. And I can take that swatch out if I need it for the remainder of the sweater. Um, we'll see how long I get it. There is waist shaping in the pattern. And I'm not sure whether I'm going to do that because I didn't do any waist shaping for my the one I did in November out of the pet, no, the, yeah, the classic wool. Um, I don't remember what it's called. I didn't do any waist shaping for that. And I like the look of that one. Cause it's just kind of a, it's just there. It's just a sweater. It's nice. It's cozy. There's room to move. Um, so I think I might not do the waist shaping. We will see. We will see, but that one is well underway. Um, so it's at the point now where I just need to go around and around and decide on the waist shaping. Um, I do did pack my uh, thread. It's like thick thread. Um, it's in a, it's just an acrylic yarn. I think it's an acrylic and cotton. Anyway, I just have this random ball and um, it's basically what I use <laughs> to thread through things and then try them on instead of try it on tubing, which I find very frustrating and my stitches pop off all the time. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I've watched like five different YouTube videos on how to do it. Maybe it's the brand that I have, um, but I cannot get it to work smoothly. I find it way faster to take my tapestry needle, weave it through, and then pick up all the stitches. So anyway, <laughs> there's my diatribe about uh, different tools. Next up, I have uh, the first of many cowls 
<laughs> I'm calling this Taylor's Advent Cowl um, because it's made with Advent yarn leftovers. So the yarn that I'm using is my Ginger Snap That Advent from 2021. Um, I'm loosely kind of using the numbers from the Riley Rose cowl um, because I had that pattern. Um, and I also looked at the sock head cowl, um, which I've made before. And, um, but I cast on more stitches. So this is 200 stitches around. Um, I don't want to give away the patterns because maybe you don't have them. I think they're both free, but anyway, the yarn is beautiful. These are the order that she put the colors in. So I let her just spread everything out. She picked which order she wants the colors in. Um, so we have the reds going into the yellows. Um, and then there's like a peachy color going into the pinks. And now I'm tangled in my microphone. <laughs> oh goodness, what have I done? Nope, this has gotta go under here. Okay, we're untangled. I <laughs> put that back in my, in my thing um and uh, and then there's more colors somewhere else here so then we go from the pinks through the blues and then over to the greens and that's the order that she wanted it in so that's what i am doing i'm doing nine rows of each color unless i run out early like this this lighter gold one here they're not nine rows because i ran out so then I just joined the next one and moved on. So it's kind of close, it's close-ish. So, um, yeah, that is it for that one. Next up is my foolproof cowl. And um, this is using the rest of the leftovers from the cowl. Uh, so the foolproof cowl is a pattern by Louise, Louise Zazbam. And I have made three of these already. Um, just three? I think just three. Uh, it does look like a triangle shawl right now, um, but then you will work off of this side and off of this side and then join it back around. Um, yeah, basically I'm just gonna use up all of the leftovers. I'm striping them every other row. And um, as I use up them in the cowl, I will throw them in here and add them on. So again, this is Ginger Snap That yarn in her fingering weight. Um, advent from 2021. So it feels good to be getting to the end of an advent yarn. I still have two more in a basket over there. I moved everything around <laughs> trying to tidy up. Um, so I have plans for that, but I'm not taking any of those on my trip because that would be a lot of winding that I don't want to do. What is next? Next up, I cast on a simple hug cardi. It doesn't look like much. I'll show you my... Um, swatch. I did a swatch. But I really like the the look of the mohair with it. So I am excited. Um, so that I just swatched with the just the lagoon color and then I have this um, color pat it's kind of chunks of color to go with it. This is tropical. The yarn is uh, Loops and Thread Joy DK. So the, tur the turquoise color is Lagoon and the multicolor is Tropical. And then the mohair that I have is actually um, from Alan.com, which doesn't exist anymore. And uh, it is the Super Kid in black. I have four balls of it, so I should have plenty to do this sweater. Um, I'm not gonna take it all out, but yes, I have, I have cast it on done the bottom ribbing. Um, this is going to go super fast. So I'm not working any more on this until we're well underway. And I have more of the yarn. Everything I packed in Ziploc bags um, so that I can kind of keep everything separate in, because I don't have that many project bags, in the bigger bags that I have. And I'll take a picture at some point. I'll probably just post it on Instagram. And um, so then I have kind of like the yarn and needles and pattern all together in a Ziploc in the bigger bag and that's ready to go other than my stone wall. Stone wall? Is that what it's called? Yeah. I just have everything in my lovely peach colored bag. This one is from What the Funk which is uh, my friend Tracy and uh, she makes bags so 
go check her out. I don't, she's not making any right now, but if we keep bugging her, maybe she will make some more. Hmm, let's see what's next. Ooh, <laughs> I did cast these on. I don't know. They're ready to be worked on at least. <laughs> they don't look like much. <laughs> That's all that I have cast on, um, but I have cast them on. I've done this pattern before, so I know kind of the gist of what I need to do. Um, the pattern that I'm using for this is the Dream whoop, Dream Fingerless Mitts by Marsha Healy. Um, and uh, this will be the fourth pair that I made. So, um, so yeah, I'm getting pretty good at it. I did cast on the very biggest size, um, which I, not that Mike has extremely big hands, but this is a very thin yarn. I'd say it's a light fingering. Um, and I am using a two millimeter needle, which is the smallest one I have. And um, I just wanna make sure that he's, they're gonna be comfy for him and not too tight on his hands. So, um, so yeah, I went, it's very small needles and, um, but that should be good. The yarn is mustache in the Hogwarts colorway. I don't think it's actually called Hogwarts, but that's what's written on the tag because it was um, leftover. So it's not a full skein, but it is uh, 94 grams. So it will definitely get me a pair of fingerless mitts and maybe part of a sock too. So that is good there. Um, yep, we're gonna keep going because I got a few more on here. Next up is my Hill and Dale Cowl. This lovely yarn is some yarn that my in-laws picked up for me on their trip across Canada. So I felt it was pretty fitting to work on it on my trip across Canada. And this is from the McOslin's Woolen Mill. And um, it's kind of between a worsted and an Aran weight. But I cast on the Hill and Dale cowl. <laughs> so now's where the kind of... Um, adjustments have to come in. So I did cast on with this uh, 4.5 millimeter needle. Needle. I like the fabric that I'm getting, but I definitely don't have enough space on this needle. This is a 12 inch um, hat needle to really make it work. So um, I do have another 4.5 that I can use, so I'm gonna swap it out, but I just haven't done it yet. Um, and then I do have the bigger size and the pattern in here as well to make this cowl. This is a very rustic yarn, um, but I love it. Oh, and Hillendale Cowl is by Espace Trico. I don't know if I said that before. All right, uh, where's the, oh, it's way down at the bottom here. Um, next up is another cowl, because that's what I wear a lot of, guys. Uh, this very little bit, <laughs> um, ignore the white, is the litmus cowl, um, which is by Amy Florence Edward Green. So, I, um, the yarn that I'm using, should probably talk about that, is a uh, Knit Picks Stroll Gradient. Um, and so we have the Lion Fire, which is oranges and yellows, and then the Deep Dive, which is blues and greens. Um, so it's kind of rainbow-esque. This is definitely more of like a burnt orange versus like a red red. So we'll see what other colors I add in there, but you provisionally cast on and then you just knit a big tube until you feel like it's enough and then cast and then you graft it back together and you have a big looped cowl. Um, I'm still debating whether um, I go down a needle size because this yarn is very thin. So that one is also in the debate pile um, and needs some needle fixing fixer upper. And the last project that I've actually cast on is actually getting ripped off the needles. But I haven't done it yet because I wanted to show you that I have cast it on. So this is the Traveling Woman Shawl by Liz Avenate. It doesn't look like much at the moment, but um, you can see, you can clearly see quite well through the shawl even when it's not stretched out you can see through it ignore the ignore the yarn overs because you can definitely see through them but you can definitely see through it um and i just don't like the fabric that i'm getting the shawl pattern has been great um but i just not a fan so i am going to go down 
a needle size for that one as well. Um, but this beautiful yarn is falling apart. This is Gage Dye Works, and I got this way back when, when she was still Caterpillar Green, which was her old um, name. Hmm, 2015, 2014, I don't, I don't remember, a long time ago. So I'm happy to be finally using this. This is one of her Superwash Wool Merino Nylon bl Blends, and it is a shawl size, um, what do you call it? So it is, uh, six ounces, which is 170 grams and 550 meters. So that's her old tag. Um, but she still sells this style of yarn. And um, yeah, it's all measured out and dyed. So you get nice sections throughout. The colorway is called Peacock. And um, yes, I love it. I love it. Okay, that is it for... Um, actual projects and I, I haven't started any of the socks but I have put together my kind of project bag of, of the things that I'm going to need for the socks and picked out a bunch of sock yarn and it's all it's there I'll show you guys as I cast them on don't you worry okay so that that's enough for works in progress let's move on to events <music> I'm gonna make the events and the chatter quick. So for events, I still have the same two events that I am participating in. The first is Stash Dash, which is hosted by the Knit Girls, and I will link their website and everything else that I talk about down below. Um, so this is a kind of knit against your own target. Um, there's no prizes, there's no, you know, nothing in this. And uh, it's just to see how much you knit during the summer months. It has already started and uh, ends on August 31st. The other event is the Splash Pad Party. There are prizes and lots of chatter and lots of community on that one. Um, most of it's on Ravelry, but there is some stuff also um, on Instagram. So definitely check out her website, which is Downseller Studios, if you're interested in more on that. And that one ends July 31st, so there's just, a, just over a month left on that one. And that is it for events. We'll move on to chatter. For chatter this week, I have finished one book. It's called A Whole New World by Liz Braswell, and I listened to it on audiobook, and um, it was pretty good. Uh, it's basically a retelling of the Aladdin story. Um, it's definitely, like it's not a modern retelling, it's still set in the same era as Aladdin, but a lot of the ideas and some of the commentary you can definitely tell has a modern spin to it. Um, you know, it's all about equality and, um, you know, working together or creating a community that everyone, you know, there isn't multi-class systems where the poor don't get anything. And there's lots of that kind of political stuff in there. Um, there's not a big romance story, obviously Jasmine and Aladdin end up together, um, but there's not a lot of romance or anything like that. It's more about their trials and tribulations and how it all goes down with the genie and all that kind of stuff is, you know, slightly different. So if a few different things happened, how it would pan out. Um, it definitely, a, you know, happy ending. Um, so that's good. Um, yeah, but it was an enjoyable, enjoyable uh, listen. And um, basically everything else that we've been doing is in preparation for the trailer. <laughs> We're preparing and preparing and preparing. Um, I feel like I'm kind of like hurry up and wait at this point because um, the things that are left to pack are like our clothes and figuring out some food that, you know, what food we're taking with us from the fridge. But of course we still have over uh, a week before we leave. So we're kind of just eating what we have, but also still need groceries, but I'm just being very selective about what I'm buying and what will fit in the trailer. And so it's, it's a, it's a lot of like, okay, we can get, we need to get milk, but what else do we need? And what else can we take with us? Do I want to get another whole four, four liter or just two liter? A lot of figuring stuff out. I don't want to bore you guys with it. And then as far as our clothes and stuff, I've started packing some of the stuff um, that we aren't using right now, like some of the hats and jackets and stuff like that. But 
a lot of the clothes that we're going to be taking, you know, we wear every, every day throughout the week. So we don't, I can't pack those yet, but we've got the majority of the stuff packed. You know, I've got all the towels and the toiletries and the bedding is all out there. So we are well on our way to being done. Um, on Saturday coming up, I have to drive Taylor up to Vernon for a birthday party. So I'm planning on hitting up Fabricland and getting some foam um, for our footstool cushions. And um, I may pop into the yarn store and pick up some needles um, <laughs> for the various projects that I'm thinking about needing a different needle size on so that I have those. Um, I'm, I'm knitting with the three millimeters, the 2.75 a lot. So all of those are kind of in other projects at the moment. So I kind of feel like I'm running low on that size. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go buy some more. And I think that is everything that I'm going to talk about this week. And, uh, we will see you guys again. Um, I don't know whether I will have time to record next week or if I am just madly packing and cleaning the house because of course I want the house to be clean before we let before we leave um so we'll see so episodes will be a little sporadic for the rest of the summer and then um, come September we'll be back to our weekly schedule but uh, I hope you enjoy whatever videos I do end up putting up this summer and um, you know make sure to message me on Instagram or send me an email or comment below if you have any questions uh, make sure to subscribe so that you get notifications on when I do put up a video and we will see you guys next time Bye.